Welcome to the Optos Daytona product demonstration video, which provides an introductory overview of proper operation and imaging techniques. It is not intended to replace the initial on-site training or information provided by product documentation. Let's review the different parts of the Daytona device. This is the scan head, as it sits on the height adjustable table, along with the touchscreen tablet. And here are the eyepiece and dust cap. The server, which stores patient information and image files, should be on before starting up the Daytona, but does not require login to be available to the scan head and viewing PCs. At the beginning of each day, remove the dust cover and dust cap, then locate the on-off rocker switch on the back of the Daytona and switch to the on position. The indicator at the bottom of the device starts off green and then turns white while it is going through the pre-checks, which take approximately three minutes. While the device is warming up, the tablet will cycle through a number of screens. And then when ready, the login screen will appear and the indicator light will turn green. To log in, Choose a user by swiping through the cards at the top or type in where it says user name. Choose the correct user, enter the password, and click login. Please note that usernames and passwords are created in the admin application on the server. This will take you to the patient information screen where you may enter any combination of the patient's last name, date of birth, or ID to bring up an existing record. If the patient record does not already exist, you can add a new patient by tapping on the Add Patient tab and filling in the first and last name fields. Then the date of birth field, which is in the day, month, year format. You must also select appropriate gender and practitioner from the drop down boxes. All fields, with the exception of patient ID, must be completed in order to proceed. If you do not enter a unique patient ID, one will automatically be assigned. Now choose the capture button in the upper right hand corner and allow approximately 20 seconds for the system to prepare for image capture. The Daytona device must be cleaned between each patient using an individually sealed 70% isopropyl alcohol wipe. Thoroughly wipe down areas that the patient will come into direct contact with, beginning with the face pad, and then both handles, allowing sufficient time to dry before imaging the patient. Do not let the cleaning wipes come into contact with the inside of the instrument. Do not use tissues or other materials to dry the areas that have been cleaned, as this could cause dust to collect on the scan head mirror and optical components, which may compromise image quality. Dim the lighting in the room to achieve maximum natural dilation of the pupils before attempting to capture an image. Have the patient sit in the chair and move in close to the device. Pull up the existing patient record by typing in the first few letters of their last name. Then select the appropriate patient and press the capture button at top right. Tapping on the question mark at the bottom right hand corner of the screen launches an animated video that demonstrates what the patient will see when they look into the device and how to determine when they are correctly aligned. When the video is finished, tap the close button. If you are using an adjustable table, set the height to allow the patient to visualize the blue alignment target inside the eye opening from where they are sitting. If you are using an adjustable chair, set the chair height as to allow the safe movement of the patient in toward the instrument. Have the patient hold the hand grips on each side and move forward, keeping the light in the center of their field of view with both eyes open, pressing their forehead in and rolling their cheek until the light goes green. Then an image will be taken if auto capture is active. If the image is not satisfactory, you may choose discard then delete, which will permanently delete the image. 
You may prefer to keep all images and wait until the end of the session to delete. You should be able to guide your patient into correct position with verbal instructions. Have them turn their head slightly and using the eye to be imaged, center the blue alignment target in their field of view and move closer by pushing their forehead in until the alignment target turns green and an image is captured. Notice that the screen is divided into five areas with the wide field image at top left, a cropped image of the central pole at top right, Bottom left shows the alignment camera and indicates if patient was within optimal range for capture, too far in or too far out. Bottom right shows image type and allows the operator to assign appropriate laterality. And at the very bottom are the keep and discard tabs. If you are satisfied with the captured image, choose right or left eye, then keep. Auto capture is very quick and may occasionally produce an image that is not properly aligned or shows too much lid and lash. You can disable auto capture by tapping the screen here as shown. To manually capture images, the operator will tap the touchscreen when the patient is positioned correctly. The alignment circles and crosshairs will start out blue as the patient moves in, then change to green when close enough on the z-axis. If they turn red, the patient is too close and should be instructed to move back slightly. When the circles are green and the pupil is centered on the crosshairs, ask the patient to open both eyes wide, then tap the center of the screen to capture. If you have issues with lid and lash, you may choose to change the eyepiece. Each Daytona comes with a small and large eyepiece. To exchange, simply grasp between your thumb and index finger and gently pull to remove. Then insert the other eyepiece and snap into place. If you wish to review an image, touch the thumbnail and it will bring you back to the capture screen, where you can switch laterality if necessary. To capture autofluorescent images, tap the button labeled red-green, then select AF. Instruct the patient to align themselves in the same manner as for color images, reminding them to keep both eyes wide open as they center up the target and slowly press inward until it turns green and an image is captured. If you are not satisfied with an image, you can keep it and take another image. At the end of the session, you can select any images you wish to discard by tapping the thumbnail, then select Discard and Delete. When the imaging session is complete, Choose Finished Patient, which saves the images and moves them over to the server. The Daytona system allows you to capture a screening OptiMap or an OptiMap Plus, which is a higher resolution image for a medically necessary procedure. If this feature is available on your system, simply touch the bottom left tab and select OptiMap Plus to activate. Your system may also have a feature called eye steering which can increase the peripheral view in each of the four quadrants by shifting the patient's gaze slightly. To activate, tap the middle button and select eye steering, which then allows you to choose superior, inferior, nasal, or temporal. It is recommended that the larger eyepiece be used for eye steering. Patient alignment may be achieved using either the center first or direct steered methods. This is a demonstration of center first. With auto capture off, have the patient move in and align themselves as they would for an on-axis image. Then enable the desired eye steer direction and have patients shift their gaze to the alignment target in their field of view and move closer by pushing their forehead in until the alignment target turns green and an image is captured. To capture an image with the direct steered method, enable the desired eye steer direction, then have the patient move forward while gazing at the alignment target in their field of view until the alignment target turns green and an image is captured. For superior steering, raise the table slightly. For inferior, lower the table. 
Remind the patient to gaze directly at the alignment target and move in until the alignment target turns green. Ask them to open both eyes wide and then tap the screen to capture. When the imaging session is complete, choose Finished Patient, which saves the images and moves them over to the server. Some systems may be configured to capture stereo image pairs. To activate, select Stereo Pair from the middle tab. To start, click on the Stereo 1 imaging button, which moves the crosshairs left of center. The patient alignment LED feedback is the same as for on-axis imaging, but the patient will see a slightly clipped version of the target when they are in the correct position. Manual capture is recommended rather than auto capture. Next, click on the Stereo 2 imaging button, which moves the crosshairs right of center. You must capture both Stereo 1 and Stereo 2 images to complete the pair. You can capture on-axis images when both stereo buttons are inactive. When the imaging session is complete, choose Finished Patient, which saves the images and moves them over to the server. When you are finished for the day, tap the red Shutdown button at the top left and then select Shut Down the System. It will check for updates and instruct you to wait until the status indicator light turns yellow before switching off the power. After the status indicator light turns yellow, turn off the device by switching the on-off rocker switch to the off position. Now place the dust cap into the eyepiece and give a slight turn while pressing in to seat and then carefully drape the fabric cover over the device. You may log off the server at night, but do not shut it down. It will be necessary to clean the main mirror of the device from time to time. Begin by ensuring that you have the needed supplies. Suitable powder-free gloves, a pen light, Q-tips, OptiWipe cloths, and deionized or distilled water. Only clean the mirror if dust particles or spots have accumulated on its surface. It is recommended to leave the dust plug in place when the device is not in use, as dust particles can affect image quality. To access the main mirror, Remove the soft face pad from the eye aperture. You should not put your hand or any cleaning materials into parts of the device you cannot see. The surface of the mirror is very delicate. Therefore, it is recommended to remove any jewelry that could come into contact with the mirror and use powder-free gloves. You may use a pen light to inspect the surface of the mirror for visible dust, smudges, or spots. Gather the corners of a clean, dry OptiWipe cloth into a mushroom shape, then gently wipe the visible mirror surface. Begin at one side and use single diagonal downward strokes from the top of the area you can see. Avoid rubbing the mirror vigorously and dispose of the single-use OptiWipe when you are finished. Never use lint cloths tissues, or other materials that may create dust near the scan head. Use the pen light to check the mirror again to ensure that it is completely clean. If the main mirror still has smudges or spots, you may need to use either an OptiWipe or Q-tip along with deionized or distilled water to loosen and remove the particulate. Dab the OptiWipe or Q-tip in the water and then apply directly to the spot or smudge and gently rub in a circular motion, being careful not to touch anything other than the visible mirror surface, and avoid dripping water inside the device. Use very light pressure while rubbing the spot so as not to scratch the mirror surface. A fresh, dry OptiWipe may be used to lightly polish out any remaining streaks. Inspect the mirror surface with the pen light and confirm that particulate has been successfully removed or repeat the cleaning process if necessary. Now remove the gloves and replace the face pad. When the device is ready, capture an image and review to ensure that there is no visible artifact before proceeding with patient screening. Please notify Optos customer support if you have any questions or concerns about the cleaning procedure. Here is some guidance for use on patients with epilepsy. 
The device uses flashes of laser light. Some patients with epilepsy may be sensitive to flashes of light. Caution should be exercised for patients who have a history of reaction to camera flashes or strobe lighting. This concludes the Optos Daytona demonstration video. If you have additional questions, please visit our website at www.optos.com to obtain contact information for the office nearest you.